Yo what's up Serpa Squad, Tanner here and in this one I'll create a proper aquascape setup for my new Pipa Pipa Toads. These are an incredibly unique animal that are really fun to observe. My hope is to create an awesome tank that's built around their needs and showcases them well. Let's get to work. The aquarium itself is a standard 75 gallon tank. It's already drilled for plumbing components so we can get right into the setup. For hardscape I have a few items including dragon root and sandstone. Dragon root is a really unique looking wood with a lot of texture. This should help me create a one of a kind design. I chose sandstone because a lot of the stones are flat. This will play a huge role in how the tank is built around the toads. As I've explained in other videos, I can't just attach the items directly to the glass with foam. If I did, they would eventually detach from the glass. What I'll do instead is create an armature with a crate light diffuser. This is the same technique I demonstrated in the new Firebelly Toad Paludarium. I start by cutting out strips of egg crate and arrange them on the back of the tank. Once I get a decent formation, I go back and silicone the pieces to the back of the tank. In doing so, I make sure the plastic is embedded in the silicone. I repeated this on the sides of the tank as well. After the silicone cures, this ends up creating a good foundation to attach items to. I let the silicone cure and attach larger pieces of egg crate to the strips with zip ties. This is easy to do if you use a pair of needle nose pliers. Doing all of this is extra work, but it's a safer way to attach hardscape items to the background. This combined with foam creates a really good foundation. Also, you may have noticed that I siliconed a large piece of egg crate to the bottom of the tank. This will evenly distribute the weight of stones without creating pressure points on the glass. Now we can get to scaping. Like usual, I started with the largest element, this piece of dragon root. It will act as my key element. Its direction and characteristics will dictate the placement of the remaining items. It took a while to get the wood situated, but eventually I did. I'll add more in just a moment, but before then, I need to get these ones secured with expanding foam. I applied foam behind the wood so it locks onto the egg crate. I waited about 10 minutes. Then I went back and pressed the foam down to remove the expanded portions. I let it cure for a little longer and continued to scape the tank. I followed the directional nature of the first half to place these elements. These were secured with foam like before. Prior to adding the stones, I cut out a few sections of the egg crate frame. I covered most of the tank to start because I wasn't sure how much I would need for the scape I had in mind. I went on to place a few of the stones to get a sense of how I should scape. Once I had a direction to follow, I went on to attach the stones with foam. I sprayed it down and tried to place the stones in the same formation as before. I only added a few stones because I want most of the background to be covered with moss. To do that, I'll utilize the filter foam technique I used for the self-watering moss wall. It worked great for terrestrial moss, so I figured it will work well for aquatic moss as well. This is just 300 ppi filter foam. I cut slits into it to create a planting grid. Once the foam was prepared, I added it to the scape. As I placed the foam, I ripped off sections to get a better fit. I used the expanding foam to secure it to the egg crate and silicone for the glass. After that, I went back and shaped it with scissors. I also used a wire brush drill bit to remove excess foam. Here's the tank now. It's probably starting to make sense, but there's still more to do. I went on to lay the flat stones over top of the egg crate. These will allow me to cover the bottom of the tank without adding a fine substrate. 
When the toads eat, they literally inhale prey items. If this is done on sand, for example, it's likely that they'll ingest substrate and may become impacted. I don't want that to happen, so I also used round sandstones to cover the bottom. The combination of stones looks pretty good and is safe for the toads. That more or less completes the scape. Since there aren't planting substrates, the plants best suited for this tank are moss and epiphytes. My selection includes Christmas moss, Anubius aphazeli, Bulbitis eutoloti, and Bulbitis heteroclita. I began by planting moss within the foam wall. As I explained earlier, the grid will keep moss in place until it becomes attached. The texture is a great growing medium as well, so over time it will spread along the entire surface. I think the backdrop of moss will create a really unique look. It took a while to plant enough, but it was much easier than other methods such as glue. I went on to plant the other items. Since they're all epiphytes, they can simply be wedged between stones or the driftwood. Long term, the plants will fill in and add more life to the tank. Even still, I didn't want the setup to be saturated with plant life. A hardscape focused design will allow the toads to blend better and give them more room. I went on to fill the tank. The last element I added was the leaf litter. For this scape I'm using sea grape and magnolia leaves. I think they create nice texture, complement the rest of the scape, and will be an excellent place of refuge for the toads. To truly appreciate these animals, you need to see how well they camouflage themselves among botanicals. Plus that's what they do in the wild, so why not replicate it in the aquarium? As you know, this tank is drilled and outfitted with bulkheads. Those are attached to an Oazo Biomaster 350 canister filter. I chose this one because the heater can be housed inside the filter itself. The majority of tanks in my room are not heated, but these toads prefer temperatures in the upper 70s. Since a heater was needed, it made sense to combine it with the filtration. The filter's intake includes a low profile strainer. The return is outfitted with a dual lock line return piece. As for lighting, I'm keeping it simple with an LED tube light. None of the plants are demanding in that regard, so this will work perfectly. The top of the tank is covered with corrugated polycarbonate plastic. The toads could jump out if they wanted to, so this will keep them in and cut back on evaporation. I drilled holes in the front for ventilation and airflow since the toads breathe air. Introducing the new Pipa Pipa Aquascape. I think it turned out quite well and will properly showcase the toads. Although it's not the best decision for this video, I decided not to add them in this one. I have to keep doing water changes because of the dragon root and I don't want to unnecessarily stress out the toads. For the first week or so of it being submerged, it makes the water really cloudy and stinky. This process usually has no effect when I use it with fish, but I'd rather not take any chances when there's no need to rush. Don't worry though, I'll follow up in a few weeks and show them in their new home. By the way, my wife and I decided to name them Pancake and Flapjack. I designed this setup off of the research I gathered prior to purchasing them and based on the behaviors I've seen over the past few weeks. I explained why I used the stones and leaf litter, but I didn't give details on much else. From what I've observed, the toads are overall very placid animals. They spend a lot of time among the leaves during the day and are most active at night. They're not destructive though, they gently swim through the water and interact with one another. As always, I did my best to make a beautiful scape, but I tried to include a lot of open swimming space as well. That's also part of the reason why I didn't include a lot of plants. Long term, the moss wall will give the look of plants while also keeping a low profile. I really enjoy watching how the toads socialize with each other. They spend a lot of time together and appear to have a bond. I noticed similar behaviors from a breeding pair of African clawed frogs I used to have. I wonder if that means they'll breed soon. 
As with most animals, it also didn't take long for them to realize that activity around their tank means food. So far, they have been really good eaters. As you can probably tell, I could go on and on about how much I'm enjoying these toads, but I'll end the video there. I can't wait to share more about them in the future. I know that a lot of people think these are creepy and off-putting, but my hope is to show just how incredible they are. Anyway, I really hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.